on you. When life comes knocking at it, keep on rocking. Open that door and shout it to the world. Say, hello, hello. Ha. Here I am, here I go. Hey guys, it's Zach. It's been a while. Actually, probably two years since I made my last video. And uh, it's that time again where we talk about Anime Expo. But before that, I want to wish Sailor Moon a happy birthday. It's the 25th anniversary of Sailor Moon, and it's it's a big it's a big deal. But um, Anime Expo, we're talking about speculations, license announcements, uh, what I think is going to be licensed, and uh, we're going to make some predictions. We're going to talk about uh, each little company, and from what I know, what I can tell what could be licensed or talked about at the panels at Anime Expo. Um, of course, I'm not going to mention everything. I'm not going to talk about everything. I'm just going to talk about my personal opinions on what I think is going to be mentioned, talked about, licensed, and brought up. So I have some notes here on my phone, and I'm just going to go through, and we're just going to talk about it, and we're going to get started. All right, first off, we're going to talk about Funimation and Crunchyroll. Recently, they started a licensing agreement where they start sharing shows and dubbing shows, and so I'm just going to kind of group them together. Um, so Free was a big hit with both Funimation and Crunchyroll. So I think one of the big things that might be talked about uh, might be the Free films. Uh, a lot of companies are doing what are called pre-licensed... Uh, anime, which what they do is they license the anime uh, before it debuts or before it airs in theaters just so they have those rights to it. And Free actually has four films. They have um, Timeless Melody, The Bond, Timeless Melody, The Promise, The Take Your Marks sequel, and the High Speed Free Starting Day prequel film. And so that's four films that um, that they could get the rights to, and I think it'd be very um, surprising if they got them early before they started airing in Japan. But I think it'd be pretty uh, um, common sense for something like that to be mentioned or brought up or actually pre-licensed. The next series I'm going to jump into is uh, that's kind of similar to that is Code Geass. Um the third season is coming about. It's being uh, talked about. Trailer released just the other day, and I think that Funimation might actually announce that they have the rights to the third season um, to simulcast and stream on their website. So that'd be pretty cool. Besides Code Geass season three, they also have two compilation films that retell the stories of season one and season two, and I think that. These compilation films of Code Geass may be brought up, and Funimation may do some pre-licensing with those films as well. Of course, of course, season two of Attack on Titan just ended, and Funimation did simulcasting with that. And at the end of the last episode of season two, season three of Attack on Titan was announced, and I definitely know that season three is going to be announced for licensing and streaming and simul dubbing through Funimation. So that, that's one thing I can tell you that's probably for sure going to happen. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. The series is really good. I enjoyed uh, the first season. Haven't finished the second season, but I have been watching Attack on Titan Junior High, which is hilarious. If you haven't seen it, you need to check it out. Um, also, at uh, Anime Expo, they are debuting the live-action versions of Full Metal Alchemist, and the live action version of Tokyo Ghoul. And the directors are gonna be there, and it's gonna be a huge event, and I think it'd be pretty cool if Funimation announced the acquisitions of the live action Full Metal Alchemist movie, as well as the live action Tokyo Ghoul movie. And um, to also maybe announce the returning cast for those films. So it's gonna be a pretty big event. I think they're premiering here before they even premiere in Japan. Um, which some Japanese companies have done. Um, I think Toei did it with uh, the two Dragon Ball uh, Z films, Battle of Gods and Resurrection of Frieza. 
So um, that could be that could be something that's in the possibility of licensing. Speaking of Tokyo Ghoul, let's talk about season three. Everybody's up in speculations. Is it happening? Is it not happening? What's going on? A while back, Funimation made a statement saying they have teamed up um, with the animation company to fund this creation of Tokyo Ghoul Season 3. And that was just kind of all that we heard. We didn't hear anything after that or anything more about it. And um, I'm hoping for maybe a statement about Season 3. Have they dropped it? Are they going to continue to pursue it? What's going to go on? And I definitely think if Funimation announces the acquisition of the live action film, that will definitely be brought up either by one of the representatives or by an audience member. Another title that I think is going to be touched upon, just for an update reason, would be the Degray Man series. Funimation recently licensed the second half of those episodes, I think 52 through 103. And I think we'll get an update on that series, where it is, maybe a release date. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool to get an update on. And um, Anime Expo is also doing a panel, I guess it might be um, Aniplex or, or one of the companies there is doing a uh, panel on the Fooly Cooly sequels of seasons two and three. So I think Funimation might touch on that, give some information on when it's being released and uh, when it's going to be airing on Cartoon Network. So that's something that I uh, am excited to hear if they do announce it. Uh, Fooly Cooly is definitely a, a goofy show, so uh, <laughs> we'll I'll just have to wait and see. Now there's one series, there's one series I would love to see licensed, and I don't think it's going to happen because of the way it's being released right now in Japan, but um, the Tenshin Muyo OVA 4 series, it's being released like every three months, and it's like one episode per three months, it's kind of a silly release schedule, um, but Funimation does own the rights to the other Tenshi series, and I think it'd be cool if they announced the OVA 4 or... Um, the series that was released a while back, um, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put the, the title down here and the picture will be right here, um, or right here somewhere on the screen. Um, yeah, so I, some kind of Tenshin Muyo license I think would be really cool to be announced, but I'm not holding my breath for it. Um, let's talk about those Bandai license rescues that happened a while back. Funimation usually talks about some of these license rescues, and they're just putting out Outlaw Star, which is in a collector's edition. And I think if they talk about any more license rescues for um, their catalog, what they're going to put out, I think it's going to be Angel Links, which is a spinoff of Outlaw Star, and the the Crest of the Stars trilogy or series, which is Crest of the Stars, Banner of the Stars one, Banner of the Stars two and the Passage of the Stars, which wasn't uh, dubbed previously through Bandai. So if they touch upon any of those license rescues, I think it might be those titles uh, with possible release date information. Let's move on to Sentai Filmworks. Sentai Filmworks um, has been all over the place. I don't really know a lot of what they may license because some of the stuff they license I'm not too familiar with. But I definitely think they might touch upon pre-licensing Food Wars Season 3 and uh, talk about how they're going to be in production with it. Because they're, they're releasing the whole collection um, in a limited edition set. It's like 51 episodes and it comes in this big old, well, you can see here uh, what, uh, what it is. Big old shebang of goodies. And so I think they might announce a pre-licensing to Season 3 of Food Wars. Speaking of um, since I've been working pre-licensing, Hellgirl is releasing a Season 4. So I'm going to put that on my list of what Sentai Filmworks may pre-license for a release. Now Sentai Filmworks also has some Bandai titles that they licensed rescued. And they have a, a whole catalog and they just released uh, Big O on Blu-ray, and uh, I've seen some clips, and it looks fantastic. And I picked three out of the catalog they have to be released next, and those three that I think Sentai may release will be 
Ur Okami, which is Black God, S. Cryed, and Sacred Seven. Those are the three that I think they might mention and also three that I hope they talk about. I really want to see these series and have them part of my collection soon. All right, transitioning time to Viz Media. Big time stuff. This is this is what I'm most excited about. Um, last night, early this morning, uh, Japan announced the announcement of Sailor Moon Crystal, the Dream Arc, season four. But it's not going to be a television series. It's going to be a, a two-part film project. Do I think Viz Media is going to license this? Not right away. It's not going to be announced in the expo. It'll probably take a while because they are theatrical films. But I do believe that they will announce the cast for Sailor Moon Classic Super S Season 4. Um, I think they'll make cast announcements for the villains and Pegasus. Also hoping that they show some kind of box art and a release date, which, looking back at history, will probably be in November if they announce the fourth season for release at AX. Some people are hoping they announce some kind of news on Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3. And I talked to Eric Mendez when I went to Akon um, almost a month ago. And it sounded like they hadn't even started dubbing on it, but uh, we'll probably get some news on that, where they are, and possibly a release date. And um, I'm thinking Shar will talk about the New York Sailor Moon event that's happening in October, sometime in the fall, and what that may be about. I don't think that they're probably going to talk about the movies. I think that when the, the I mean, the, the classic movies, uh, Hearts and Ice and Black Dream Hole. I don't think they'll talk about those until it's time to talk about the theatrical releases that they'll do, which um, will probably be similar to what they did with Sailor Moon R, uh, the movie. So, as for Viz Media, um, I'm calling Sailor Moon Super S um, Season 4 Part 1 box set and cast announcements and a possible Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3 release or update information. So now we're going to jump to Aniplex of America. I have no idea a lot of the things that they license. A lot of things they license I'm not really familiar with. Some of the stuff I am familiar with, but I, I couldn't tell you a lot of it. Um, I know very few titles of what they, they deal with. Um, they're probably going to have some kind of Fate Stay announcement or Fate Stay license of some sort and um, that's just because they do that every year. Now one thing I, I really am hoping to talk about is Mushishi Season 2. A while back Anaplex of America announced that they licensed the second season. They streamed the episodes and there was talk about a possible dub and Travis Willingham coming back and returning as his character but nothing was mentioned after that so i'm hoping we get some kind of update maybe a physical release subwise or a dub announcement something to do with mushishi maybe even um, the license of the mushishi movie that um, was announced a while back so we're going to switch switch gears for a minute we're going to talk about Kodansha of uh, America. We're going to switch gears for a minute. We're going to jump to Kodansha of America, Kodansha Comics. Uh, Kodansha is hosting a big card capture chakra panel and event at Anime Expo. And they're premiering the card capture chakra clear card arc at Anime Expo before it even airs in Japan. Like I was saying earlier, America is getting a lot of these premieres before Japan is. Um, I think that they're going to announce that they have, uh, well, I think they already do have the rights to the clear card arc manga, but I think they might get maybe some cover art or, um, an actual release date on that manga. I think that the, uh, head of, um, the 
anime portion, the, the people behind uh, that are doing the anime are going to talk about um, the anime series that's coming out. And um, I don't, it's very unlikely with this, but I'm hoping that maybe they announce a partnership um, licensing with the OVA and anime for the clear card arc. I think it's a bit too soon to have that license uh, with this series, but I think it'd be pretty cool to get some kind of announcement that one of the anime companies have licensed the clear card OVA and anime series. Uh, that would just be phenomenal. I'd love to, to just know that that's been licensed and brought over. Um, let's see. Oh, so a couple months ago, Kodansha also announced that they were going to release a Sailor Moon Eternal Editions, and those are the mangas that um, are really big with the holographic covers that are really beautiful and supposed to be a 2018 release date. I am speculating that there is going to be some kind of update on that. We're going to see maybe a cover art of Volume 1 and maybe the art book that was talked about a long time ago that each country is supposed to get that's supposed to have different material. So I'm going to guess we're going to get some update on the Eternal Edition of the Sailor Moon manga and possibly the U.S. release of the art book. And finally we're going to jump over to Shout Factory. Shout Factory is having a big Digimon event at Anime Expo. Um, they are early releasing uh, the second film determination and they are screening the third movie so that's a big deal some of the cast are going to be there for autograph sessions they're having a big panel with actors and like i said they're having the premiere of the third movie i think that shop factory yeah there it, you know while they're there or the toy animation people are there they're going to announce that shop factory has the, the rights to uh, Digimon Try Movie 4, Loss, and Digimon Try Movie 5, Union. And uh, that would be pretty exciting just to know that they have those titles under their belt and we can have the peace of mind to know that these actors will be working on these films. It's supposed to be a six film story arc and the first three are already dubbed. That leaves three left to go. And movie five is supposed to debut in Japan in September, around there. So I think it'd be pretty cool to have that announcement. That's all I've, I have on my list for my Anime Expo um, thoughts on licensing and uh, news that I think they're going to cover. Um, probably a chunk of this probably won't happen. I know I did a, a, a cast prediction way back when, when uh, Viz Media announced they had Sailor Moon, and I was totally off. So um, I'm not going to make any actor predictions. Um, the woman said this, anybody, I think they cast anybody as Pegasus in Sailor Moon, Viz Media. Um, I don't know how I feel it might be Matt Mercer, but... Um, that's just because he's going to be there. I think it'd be cool if, if that was a if that was a thing. But um, just something to, to think about. So the next couple days is going to be at Anime Expo, and one of my best friends is is, uh, is there. He left this morning, and uh, he's going to experience all this thing. And I hate that I couldn't. I couldn't go this year, but I do plan on going next year. Um, the way that Viz Me has worked is every year they have announced a Sailor Moon season uh, for distribution and cast announcements. So um, three years ago, uh, they did Classic. Then they did the next year, that was Sailor Moon R. Last year was Sailor Moon S. I think this year is going to be Super S, and next year is going to be Stars. So I'm going to definitely be there next year um, because I do want to see who's going to be cast as the Starlight, how they're going to handle that, and I want to be there for the big, uh, the big Sailor Moon event. It's one of my favorite favorite animes. So um, 
hopefully next year will be as big as what this year seemed to be with all the Japanese representatives and all the movie premieres and all the news that is being brought out. So I just want to get my opinions out there and talk about them. And um, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I will do a follow-up video after Anime Expo. And um, if I can figure out how to do it, I'm going to do a live reaction to the panels. And uh, you can see me react to some of the news because they'll be streaming on Twitch. But until then, I'm going to say peace out. And I will catch you guys soon. Love you. Bye.